And welcome everybody. Today we are going to be watching uh, Team 8 versus CJ Antis to start off. And then we're going to have uh, something. Stars versus KT, I believe. I believe that is correct. That is correct. Excellent. Uh, I am joined once again by Ominous. Say hi. Hi guys. Good to be back. All right. And game number one is going to be Killer vs. Snow Killer busting out the Mission Impossible um, for his theme song. But not not quite as good looking as Tom Cruise, especially with that hair though. Really? I actually think that uh, Killer is kind of good. I'm not a big Tom Cruise fan. Really? Really? Are you a Mission Impossible fan though? Because you can be no, a Mission Impossible fan without being a Tom Cruise fan. Oh, oh that's a little bit disappointing. I mean, to be yeah, fair, like, the third movie made me want to kill myself, but, you know, it's... it's alright. Didn't he actually kill himself in that movie for a brief period of time? Like, stop his heart or something? Did he? That would make sense. I, I have a brief memory of, of him doing something like that in one it, of the they movies. They probably had, like, an intermission in the middle of the movie instructing people on how, on how to kill themselves in order to, you know, not continue watching the movie. But, uh, yeah... You might have gotten confused with that. True. Uh, anyway, we are going to be on Neo Electric Circuit here. As you can see, not too many stats on this map because they reset the stats for all the Neo maps. <coughs> so they only have like a couple of weeks worth of games. Or, well, a week worth of games, rather. And it looks like we're going to have some technical issues here in the VOD or in the in the game rather, I'm tempted to skip ahead. Um, let me actually just quickly jump ahead a little bit and then I'll tell you where I go to and then we can start. So we don't have to faff around too much. Oh! Alright, I am at 345. Yeah. Alright, starting in 3, 2, 1, go. Looking at T1 logo, Entus logo, yeah. And, uh, yes, Urbo, this is the Ominous from SE2, who, wait, you casted, like, what did you cast again, the, the big event? Uh, a couple of Dreamhacks. Oh, off, yeah. Too. He cast a Dreamhack, guys. I got connection, see? I'm hooked up with a, with a Dreamhack guy. <laughs> anyway, it looks but like... no uh, one knows about the Swedish coaster anyway, so <laughs> it's all day 9 show. That's right. You just can't compete. I know how you feel, man. I know how you feel. Day 9 doesn't even cast Brood War anymore, and people are still like, oh, when's Day 9 going to do something? Anyway, it looks like Killer's going to be the purple Zerg in the bottom right. Uh, his ID in the game was Baxter. Of course, that's what he's changed his name to. Killer definitely sounds better. And Snow will be the uh, green Perdos in the top right. Um, yeah, so... Baxter kind of sounds like a dog's name, doesn't it? Baxter. Like a dog? Yeah. I I wouldn't personally call my dog Baxter, but you know what? If you want to do that, <laughs> actually no, no. I'm I'm actually like if if you call your dog Baxter, I'm like going to report you to PETA for animal abuse. That's that's kind of cruel. That's like mean. Why well, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't put that on an animal. That's just cruel. I don't know. Anyway, it looks like a forge fast ex expand from Killer. Most likely going to be a overpool. Or sorry, from Snow rather. Uh, most likely going to be an overpool from Killer. And yeah, it seems to be the standard to say so. Indeed, indeed. Say now, um, interestingly, I don't think have we ever seen any kind of like super fast lurker rush in ZVP on this map to break down the back door? Because I don't think I've seen any. Like we've seen it done. We've seen lurkers break down the back, but not you know, any kind of ultra-aggressive build geared towards that yet, which I'm a little bit disappointed by, because there are a lot of uh, interesting things you can do. I'm still waiting to see a, a remake, a remix of that Great vs. Bisu game on this map, where he uh, where he did the proxy hatchery lurker contain. But, oh, actually it's going to be a 12 hatch here from Killer. Interesting. Um, I guess it's fine since it's a four-player map, so it's actually quite unlikely to get your hatchery blocked. But Snow is actually just going to cannon rush this straight up, not not going to try and hide it. Building a pile on there now, presumably that is in fact uh, drone tight in that position, 
Is that the case? Looks like... Ooh, very cute here. Uh, <laughs> Killer actually tricking oh, some drones through the minerals, and so Baxter puts a second pile on there and gets a second drone through using the gas trick, but now he's got three drones stuck there, and they can't <laughs> mine anymore, so that seems a little bit overkill. Yeah, maybe, but uh, he, he could glitch them through again, I guess, <laughs> using the same trick, maybe. Oh man, this I feel like this has actually ended up being worth it for Snow anyway, because he just got three drones trapped behind the minerals, and they have to kill the pylon to get out. <laughs> See, I don't think you can. I don't think you can do the gas cancel to get the drone out again. You can only do it to get in because when you cancel the extractor like that, I'm pretty sure the drones by default head downwards straight away. I'm not 100% sure about that, and I guess he just doesn't think it's worth it trying to uh, to push the drones back through the minerals the other way. But that's <laughs> that's quite funny. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually quite a huge investment losing three drones at this point, not mining. Yeah, I'm wondering though, because the thing is, on Snow's end, like, you'd think, oh, Snow only lost a pylon, so it's not that big a deal. However, there is another additional cost that's a little bit harder to measure, which is that, uh, since he was planning on cannon rushing, he would have been saving money to build cannons, like, once the pylon's finished. So it's it's most likely that his gateway and, you know, his uh, his nexus are a little bit delayed, compared to where they would have might been. Uh, we weren't actually looking at his base, so I'm not sure if he actually delayed those. Like, this could all have just been a fake, he might have not saved money at all, but presumably he did save a little bit of money for cannons, so... Uh, he's, uh, he also got slowed down a bit, and obviously the, the 100 minerals for the pylon is lost. Yeah, but I think it was a fair trade overall. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, Snow definitely in a decent position. His wall looks quite funny though, and by funny I mean bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it seems kind of off. Yeah, I, I don't even know if that forge is tight on the left side, that looks like quite a big gap. I hope that at least that's tight. Uh, but at least he does have his probe in here, seeing what's going on. He sees a lair going up. Uh, Killer's taken his back mineral only. Uh, that is oftentimes indicative of uh, some kind of early hydro play, but we do see the lair, so that's actually not the case. And uh, Snow just going for a stargate. How do you think that will affect him later in the game, only having two guests? Well, see, I always talk about how I don't like when Zergs take their third at the mineral only here in this matchup. Because I don't because like I, I don't really don't see a reason not to take another gas base. Like if you're a little bit scared, just take the six o'clock. Like the six o'clock gas base is pretty close to your natural here. So you are kind of limiting yourself with this mineral only. Um, yeah, I just I just feel like it's a little bit restrictive. Um, you're kind of like you're kind of stuck on well Nah, you can do a decent amount with two gas still, but I don't know. I I think it's better to like just take another natural or take another gas base and then get that put, like put a macro hatch there later on, like you do in ZVT. But yeah, pro gamers seem did, to disagree. Did you notice with me. the hydro list then? My, maybe your wish will come true about the, the early luck play. Maybe He's taking a second gas already and uh, and Larry suffering, right? Yeah, did he uh, did he get a hydrogen yet though? Because it could actually yeah. just mean oh he did get a hydrogen. Okay, I was just not paying attention. <laughs> okay, ah yes indeed it is there at the natural. So oh this could be lurkers. Of course he's gonna see it though. So snow presumably will have uh, once he sees that we'll just put a pylon down at the back and then he can cannon that up if he needs to. Interestingly, that back there is actually extremely narrow. I think at some points on the path, you can actually block it with a single pylon, at least against lurkers. So uh, you can probably buy a lot of time with that. But, you know, as we were talking about earlier, it just hasn't been done that much in Pro League, so it's hard to say. Anyway, there are the extra cannons being thrown up. Um, looks like Hydra Speed was actually upgraded first. And, of course, our guy is checking things out. Gonna yes, harass no things. Uh... He knows exactly what's going on, scouting everything with that Corsair and turning down a lot of channels on the front, so it's kind of scared, I guess. It looks like Killer's just going to go for it, uh, picking off that cannon on the edge. The other cannon's not quite finished yet. He did lose a decent amount of units, though. I don't know if that was the best idea. It doesn't seem like he's actually committing to this. I mean, what what's kind of puzzling to me is that he has Overlord speed already. That feels a little bit early. Uh, I wonder if he might actually be going for some kind of drop here. Um, that might be it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's not that that battery. early, but... Sorry, go ahead. Hey, um, I'm sorry. Uh, he's adding a fifth battery already? It seems like 
doesn't have the economy to support that really with the aggression and this year has a decent amount of drones but still indeed indeed and is this gonna be a drop it's looking suspiciously like it but I haven't seen a load up just yet hmm anyway Snow's got a few units still chilling in his main. He's also building a cannon there. Uh, well, that cannon is actually standard by the Stargate, just to uh, pr make sure Scourge can't camp it. But, alright, we got some lurkers morphing on the side, and, yep, he might just choose to break down the back. It could still be a drop. I'm still thinking it might be a drop, yeah, and there is I the fast third. I think it's a drop. Two, two overlords are moving into position, so it's probably a drop. Uh... Load up. Uh, <laughs> he might just be waiting for the last minute so it doesn't get revealed and he doesn't get caught by the o Corsair. Oh, there's the drop. Excellent. Sweet. And it looks like he's actually going to go in two positions. He's going to send one Overlord over the natural and send one to the main. So he's going to do a double drop here. Sol uh, I think Solki pulled this off uh, to great effect against Movie, I want to say, on Sniper Ridge. Um, where he basically won the game just with four lurkers, massacring all of the probes. And there is the drop in the main base, a slightly slow pull from Snow, but it looks like it is in time. And there's the second drop in the natural. There is one cannon in both mineral lines in range. Is he going to be able to clear out the lurkers in the main? Looks like the lurkers in the main barely get cleared out before the cannon goes down, but the natural cannon is going to go down seven kills on that lurker. And, well, actually, I think Snow can just storm that now and continue mining. I don't know why he's not storming it. Uh, yeah, okay, so he's just going to use one Storm on that and put his probes back. So it's taking a little bit of damage. But I don't think that was game-ending, especially since he's got his third up. No, not at all. I mean, he lost some probes, but I don't think he did nearly enough damage to make that worth it. He did delay a mining a bit on the natural and also the main, but uh, overall I think that was pretty well defended from Snow. And he's actually getting a second and third evolution chamber. I, I, I hope that's intentional. Uh, looks like he's going to go for triple upgrades here. Very interesting stuff. Also got his 6 o'clock up and running crucially during that attack. So definitely uh, you know, has a, has a longer game plan in mind. Just going to go for these lurker drops anyway. Just to be a little bit cutesy. And the, the triple evolution chamber indicates to me that he's... He's thinking about a late game army, but basically he he's gonna he's gonna go for like mass hydra ling with a few lurkers to support. Cause uh, other like if you go for the heavier hydra lurker army, you don't really it's harder to afford the gas, and you know you don't really need the melee upgrade that much. So triple you're egos. Lose that mix. Oh man, so sick. <laughs> lost the nexus. Oh wow, That's taking fair. down the nexus, and oh looks like lurker guy's gonna get stuck though. Nice pylon placement. Oh man, that was only 8 Hydras. They took that Nexus down super fast. Those are like crack Hydra. Hydras. <laughs> it's, it's kind of weird build from uh, from Kibler's side, but uh, it's working out kind of nice for him. So I think it's looking pretty good for him. He has to be scared of uh, somewhat of a, of a timing push though. I mean, the snow is slowly but steadily building up his forces and he has a few high tempers as well, so... Yes, get some standing forces. You know, that's that's actually very true. A lot of times, like um, Zergs will be doing all kinds of you know fancy drop, like you know lurker drops, ling drops to take snipe tech buildings and stuff, and doing all sorts of fancy harass. And then the Protoss just like walks out of their base and kills them. And it's because you know harass isn't free. He has to invest in the sp you know the overload speed, the drop. Uh, every time he goes for those kind of drops, he is losing the units as well, so his army is getting weaker. And oh my God, all that thought, nice storm catching the tail end of those drones. Uh, uh, meanwhile, DT going into the main base. It looks like Killer is aware of it. He should be. Alright, he just has a couple of Hydras coming in here, but the DT's still going to get a decent number of kills. It's like, no, actually only four kills, but oh, going into the natural as well. Not the best play Storm, though. He actually no, he actually only killed two drones. Yeah. There, but <laughs> I was holding my breath just hoping for those drones to die, but it didn't work out. Yeah, that was... Oh, man. The, the idea behind the drop was very, very good. Um... Actually, a, a pretty common tactic for, for Protoss to do is you drop a couple of DTs in the main, and then you fly over to the natural with two High Templars, and then when they see the DTs, they like run all their drones to the natural, and then you get double the drones to storm. It's pretty awesome. Um, so it's kind of like a similar principle to that. But, uh, you know, it looks like Killer is massing up a decent number of units of his own. His economy is very, very healthy. He's got a ton of hatcheries right now. Six, seven, I believe eight hatcheries in total right now. So his production is going to be crazy. And he's going to have very good upgrades. 
So it's looking a little bit scary for Snow right now. Snow's actually behind on supply. So I would actually upgrade that and go and say he's a... Uh, it's looking very scary for Snow. Yeah, I totally agree. And actually taking a base on the 9 o'clock as well. So uh, Sukila has a pretty, pretty firm grip of this game right now. Yeah, oh, looks like random 4 zealots getting caught in the middle of the map. I'm not really sure what they were doing. Perhaps going to go harass the 6 o'clock or something. A DT guy <laughs> has like an entire control group of lurkers chasing him. Uh, but he's going to sneak into the main. Most likely not going to do anything. Meanwhile though, while this DT is a uh, busy distracting killer, the main Protoss force is going to move out. Now how big is this army? It's going to, I mean, as we can see from the supply counts, it's definitely smaller than the Zerg army. He's down like 20 supply right now. But if he has a really nice composition of like Dragoon Templar, which he apparently doesn't. I was going to say, if he had like some really sick composition, maybe he could, you know, be super cost effective and, and just kill a ton of units. But yeah, that's not really going to cut it. Uh, uh, storming three links isn't, isn't very good either, so it doesn't look too good for Snow right now. Hopefully yeah. he can do some magic with this push, but uh, I don't think so. That 9 o'clock, by the way, is a little bit weird to me. I mean, you know, Killer's got a decent big army on the map. He's, I mean, he doesn't really have map control per se, but I don't think he should be really be that scared of the Protoss army, considering he's that far ahead in supply. And so I don't really see a need to take the hidden expansion at the 9 instead of just like taking the bottom left main or something normally. Yeah, but I don't think he's, he's hiding it really. I think it's more like if you want to kill this base, you have to go so far out from, from my other bases I can just counterattack or, or flank you or something like that. I don't think it's the hiding purpose. Itself. Oh, that's an excellent point as well. Because we also saw that, you know, he is investing a lot in Hydras and Lings, both of which are pretty speedy. Uh, he also did a nice lane counterattack just now to deny the 3 o'clock, taking down this uh, shuttle or attempted harass pretty easily. Although there is one DT in the natural, I don't think he's actually noticed that. Wow, no, never mind. Nice reaction from Killer. But it looks like he's actually got like so many units, he's losing control a little bit. He's, he's definitely got too many units for control groups, that's for sure. <laughs> gonna start, gonna have to do the good old box and A move now. And ooh, 11 kills on the DT though, but another link counterattack into the 3 o'clock. The Protoss army this time is completely out of position, so no way for him to defend it. He's just gonna have to go. And he's actually swung around the left side here to try and move in. A bunch of lurkers morphing, not quite finished yet. When they finish, they'll be extremely effective, because it is a very zealot heavy composition from Snow, since he does have that mineral only. Looks like big storm on the lurkers as they pop. Is he going to be able to break through here? He's leading off with a good number of storms. It'll be quite crucial, actually, if he can take out the 6 o'clock base. Uh, looks like, oh my god, so much Ling blood here. This is what I'm talking about. Even if Killer's way ahead on supply, his, his units are pretty weak. He's mostly Hydra Ling. The composition is just not that strong. But it looks like... Yeah, that was a Ling Massacre, but uh, I think if Snow doesn't win with this push, it's, it's kind of over, because uh, Killer has done such a good like job denying that it's not over. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, looks like it actually just wasn't nearly enough stuff. Killer with a nice flank from the other side completely annihilates the Peros army. It is just gone from the face of the earth. The only thing left is two observers. And wow, that killer. Is the face of a killer. <laughs> I see what you did there. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to. It's all right. Bad puns are uh, always welcome on the stream. Anyway, so yeah, Snow's pretty dead now. Uh, he's behind like 60 supply. Um, he's still stuck on his original three bases. Looks like the random observer guy is going to get taken down. And that's going to give uh, Teammate a nice lead here against CJ. And that's going to be really bad for CJ. You see, CJ right now is in this kind of uh, limbo. Or, or not really limbo, but they're in... I don't think they're in a playoff position right now. They're like fifth. They're barely out of a playoff position, so they really need to win their matches if they want to make sure they can get into the playoffs. Uh, but I mean, teammate is similar. I think I think fifth and sixth are like CJ and teammate or something like that. So teammate is it's a little bit worse for them. I think they have a slightly worse record than CJ. So I guess it's actually even more crucial for teammate to win their match or to win all their matches. And whoa, yeah. a lot of lurkers coming out there. Why did he burn all those lurkers right there? That was kind of weird. Might as well, man. Oh, uh, uh, charge! Poor shuttle. 
and so is looking somewhat concerned. Yeah, I'd be pretty concerned too if I just like lost my entire army, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then my shuttle died as well. I wonder what was in that. Hopefully it wasn't something super expensive like 2DT, 2HT again. I don't think it was to go all the way on that side. It's probably just two High Templars and a Zealot or something. Yeah, and Snow is he's done a pretty good job closing that supply gap once again, but, it, but it's still, I mean, it's, it's, he's got a, got a supply ahead and he doesn't have that fourth, fourth base established, so Tito is just looking unstoppable right now. And here come the Chogalings. Oh my god, so many Lings. You can storm down 20 and there will be 50 more to take their place. GG from Snow. And Killer takes set one in a convincing ZVP victory over Snow. Snow is so shocked he can't even open the door. Of course, Snow. And Team A gets off to a nice start here. Yeah, really well played from, from Killer. I thought the beginning was a bit shaky and those drops didn't do much, but he had a nice control of the game and then the map control just took more and more bases and outmax his opponent more or less. And in terms of the overall series, I think this is quite important too for Killer to take it off because now, like, because I mean, Jadong and Baby have really been the mainstays of Team 8. So if they can take they, their games, then uh, obviously Team 8 will have their, their three wins that they need. So uh, pressure is definitely on CJ to do something now. Anyway, let me load up the second VOD. Ian Reed wrote on our Facebook. All right, you ready with the VOD? Yeah, I'm right behind you. All right, starting in three, two, one, go. Okay, and it looks like set number two is going to be Sweaty Hands C. Versus high.